Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome tonight to the regular meeting of the Mayor and Board of Trustees. It is, of course, September 25th. Uh, we are going to have a, uh, of course, the first uh, order of business is the Pledge of Allegiance. Tonight we are being are led by Jack Micheletti from Pleasantdale Middle School. He is a sixth grader, and per his principal, Griffin Sontag, he, is, he, is, uh, he has uh, one eighth grade brother. Parents are Ann and Michael. They're here this evening. Uh, he's involved with a student council intern this year. He plays baseball and basketball, loves playing, playing and watching sports. And his favorite subject in school is math. Well, you can come uh, join us or lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks, Jack. Karen, may I have roll call, please? Trustee Francis. Here. Trustee Model. Here. Trustee Paveza. Here. Trustee Mattel. Here. Trustee Snyder. Yes. Trustee Schiappa. Here. Mayor Straub. Here. We now have a section for the residents' comments. Are there any residents that would like to address the board at this time? Is there a sign up sheet right now? Oh, I'm sorry. Sign up sheet? I missed it. Cindy Model, I spoke to you at the last meeting about the Hinsdale <coughs> South and Central population imbalance. And that imbalance, by the way, is exacerbate, exacerbated by the board enlargement of the buffer zone. So it's not so much a natural imbalance as one that's been created. It's about population size as well as being racial and socioeconomic in nature. And it affects both our high school and our property values with the two being closely tied to each other. At the last meeting, a few of the Burr Ridge trustees indicated in their remarks that if we all just spoke to the school board or ran for the school board or wrote the school board, that we could change things. Well, we've done all those things and, and more for decades. This has been going on since 1991 and probably before that. So it's, it's a long time. For our efforts, we've been labeled clowns, far left extremists, far right extremists, leftist extremists masquerading as teabaggers, Yes, baggers. Um, left, it's ma masquerading as rightists, Tea Party extremists, <coughs> Hugo, Ch Hugo Chavez wannabes trying to redistribute wealth, a radical fringe group, never mind that 93% of the voters in the South attendance area voted against the referendum this spring, and, you know, and, and all of those names and more can be found on a Facebook page called D86 Strong. This is a group that is primarily for Hinsdale, Central Parents, despite its D86 name, and you, you can look it up, it's, it's quite interesting. It's quite an education. Um, that particular page was created by District 86 board member Nancy Pollock, perhaps in violation of board policy. She removed herself last week after she was noticed there. I'm honestly surprised we weren't accused of being the SDS, but perhaps the writers <coughs> were not in that particular group. We're absolutely none of that. We are the majority of the voters. We support good schools. We support all students at both schools and their educations. And we also support using taxpayer dollars wisely. We support equality in education so that every student in this district has a chance for the same opportunities. All this is to say, we've tried normal channels to address this issue, and none have worked. Now we're asking the Burr Ridge Board of Trustees to address this by looking into it as a property value issue in hopes that the District 86 Board might hear another governmental body. It's our hope that they will hear another um, governmental body. It's, it's our last hope. It's the last place we have to go with this. We've tried everything else. And just to address really quickly, I've read things saying that, oh, we're only interested in property values. For me, that's a way of getting at this with a legal basis. This is, this is an equality issue. 
there's racism involved here, there's discrimination against socioeconomic classes. And I am all for, I'm an educator myself, I am all for wonderful schools. And I think you can get a good education at South. But something's wrong there, because they don't want to send their kids to South. Thank you. Okay, and I, we have a second person signed up as uh, Michael Mo, Mo, Ma, Ma Ricky. Mo Ricky. Okay. No, I just wanted to uh, kind of reemphasize uh, how happy I was to hear that the board and that the mayor was getting involved in this uh, District 86 schooling issue with the balancing between Hinsdale South and Hinsdale Central. Um, I think it's great to have another entity shining the light on this. And I was very interested to hear from Mickey's uh, communication last week that uh, there are no Burridge residents who live in the buffer zone. So that was news to me. Um, I was kind of surprised by that. And I thought that was an interesting piece of information that uh, you know was just, just news to me. And I thought it was an additional light on, on this from a Burridge perspective. So again, I look forward to the board's continued involvement um, and just kind of helping rectify for everyone, both in Hinsdale Central and in Hinsdale South, to make this um, as you know equitable for everyone as possible. Yep. And Michael, just one last thing: the I, we're all learning from this. We're just looking as we're looking into it, we're learning more things. Uh, I was, though, I, I kind of confirmed what we already thought that there are also no Burridge residents on the board, uh, which is another interesting little. With you know, and we're and that's what that's what we're doing is exploring the options and doing some research and helping cast some some light on it. And I think a lot, everyone in Burridge, and uh, you know, for myself, who has three kids in Gower now, who will be eventually going to Hinsdale South. You know, I think we just really appreciate the effort and the light that you guys are shining on this. So, so keep it keep it going. Thank, Thank you. Is there anyone else that do? Yeah, we, we, we did, we do have that, but that's okay. We, that's quite all right. Quite all right. Uh, Betsy Levy, Burr Ridge. Um, we need the village board to help because we have been trying to get the school board to listen. We have gone to their meetings. We have sent them notes. We have run through the school board, but we are not getting anywhere. It seems like the school board has their own agenda and they do not care what is good for the whole district, including the residents in Burr Ridge. And they do not care about being responsible to all the taxpayers in the district who want resources used wisely <coughs> before the taxes are piled on. Anyone else? Okay, we're moving on to the consent agenda. Now, all items listed with an asterisk are considered a routine by the village board and will be, act be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a board member or citizen so requests, in which event uh, it, will be, it will be removed. Under minutes, we have uh, 5A, an approval of regular board meeting of September 11, 2017. B, receive and file draft pathway commission meeting of September 14, 2017. C, receive and file draft plan commission meeting of September 18th, 2017. D, receive and file draft economic development committee meeting of, of September 19th, 19th, 2017. Under ordinances, we have 6A, approval of an ordinance amending section XF of the Burridge zoning ordinance to clarify the permitted and special use listings for a team and club athletic training facility in a G1 district, GI district, uh, text amendments uh, G, I as well, district permitted and special uses. But we have uh, 6B, approval of an ordinance granting special use approval pursuant to the Burridge Zoning Ordinance to permit a team and club recreational facility of GI, or meaning General Industrial District at Z12 2017, located at 280 Shore Drive, Windy City, Curly. <coughs> C, approval of uh, an ordinance granting a variation from the Village of Burridge Zoning Ordinance to permit a fence located in the corner side yard, Z13 2017, uh, located at 15W 455 79th Street, St. Mark's Christian Montessori Preschool. D, approval of an ordinance 
amending Chapter 2 of the Burr Ridge Municipal Code, uh, adding new article uh, that will be 17 uh, with regard to administrative procedures for assessing and determining claims under the Public Safety Employee Benefits Act. Resolutions, we have adoption of resolution authorizing an intergovernmental agreement between the Village of Burr Ridge and Cook County for the provision of environmental health inspection services. Under, under considerations, we have a D, approval recommendation to award contract for purchase of uh, trees for 2017 fall tree planning program. E, approval of recommendation to award contract for fiscal year 1718 curbside branch pickup program. F, approval of vendor lists in the amount of $508,455 for all funds, plus $210,349.30 for payroll, for a grand total of $790,808.85, which includes a special expenditure of $19,639.14 to Burns and McDonald for engineering of Kyline Road uh, right-of-way improvements. May I have a motion to approve the following items on the consent agenda? That would be 5A, B, C, and D, <coughs> 6A, B, C, and D, resolutions 7A, considerations uh, 8D, E, and F. So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Trustee Francis? Yes. Trustee Scalpa? Yes. Trustee Snyder? Yes. Trustee Mattel? Yes. Trustee Paveza? Yes. Trustee Model? Yes. 6 0. <coughs> Thank you. Motion passes 6 0. Under consideration, we are on the presentation of the fiscal year 2016 17 audit. Do you want to tee that up? Uh, yes, I'll introduce Finance Director Jerry Sapp, who will introduce our auditor. Good evening. Uh, annually, the uh, village is required by law to perform an audit of our financial records. Over the summer, the finance department works closely with the auditor. Uh, the auditor is hired by the village board and he has to report back to you uh, annually. Um, it's uh, an important part of your oversight responsibility uh, for the village. Uh, tonight, we have with us Scott Kermain. He's a partner with our auditor, BKD. CPA and advisors, and he's here to report to the board. Thanks, Mayor, and thanks to the entire board for having us back again to <coughs> the audit for this year. Uh, especially like to thank Jerry, Lynette, and all the finance staff for all their hard work in getting prepared for the audit. Uh, it certainly does make for a smoother uh, process as we go through. Uh, we were on site for a few weeks in the uh, middle of July uh, for our field work and then uh, concluding now certainly with the uh, presentation to you all uh, of the results. So uh, as in the past, we provide two main deliverables uh, as part of our audit engagement. First is the bound financial statements for the village. Uh, and then those are accompanied by a required communication to you as the board. Uh, which are uh, required under auditing standards. Uh, and really that is, uh, in your case, uh, just here to present to you that we did not encounter any problems in conducting our audits, didn't have any disagreements with management or uh, have any significant adjustments uh, as a result of our audit. Uh, additionally, uh, as part of that letter, we would normally convey to you any uh, management letter comments that we might have uh, surrounding any potential weaknesses in the internal control structure. Uh, and I can happily say that we didn't have any uh, of those uh, to report this year uh, as well. There are a couple items in that letter uh, that really just convey to you some new accounting standards that are coming down the road. Uh, the Governmental Accounting Standards Board has been very active lately <coughs> on that, uh, busy uh, with new standards. So there's a, a number of those that are going to be impacting the village uh, in upcoming audits. In terms of the actual financial statements, I would just highlight for you that we have issued what we refer to as a clean or unmodified opinion on the financials, which means that everything uh, is properly stated in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. Uh, so that's exactly what you want to see under the circumstances. Uh, that's as good as it gets. And then uh, would also point out that you may recall from last year that the village was required in 2016 to adopt a new standard around the village's pension plans, uh, both IMRF and the police pension fund. Uh, so last year was the first year that you saw those pension liabilities come on to the village's financial statement. So we continue to report under that structure now and that continues to be the village's largest liability. Uh, and that's very common among all municipalities and governments for that matter. It's the continued uh, struggle that everyone is dealing with. Uh, 
right now. So uh, that information is uh, included in the financial statements. I would encourage you all, if you haven't had a chance, to read the management's discussion and analysis, which is in uh, the documents on page 4 through 13. It provides a nice narrative overview of the financial statements. It's certainly easier to read than all the footnotes and uh, other required disclosures. So if you haven't seen that, we'd certainly encourage you to uh, take a look at that. And then uh, with that, I would be happy to answer any questions that you may have for us. Yes, well, there was the question. The one, the one thing that I worry about more than anything else is being a long-term trustee is we have people like you come in to audit our books to make sure that everything is right. That we're, you know, because darn too many of us are, are super experts in, in finance. So that's why we hire you people. Yet, I read in the paper where I just read two weeks ago, somebody in another suburb uh, had hundreds of thousands of dollars that they didn't catch. Why don't you guys catch things like that? Yeah. So. A couple things on that point is there's uh, what we refer to and what really guides the entire financial statement process is the concept of materiality. Uh, so as we conduct our audit, uh, we look at your internal control structure and find, try to identify potential weaknesses that could lead to misstatements in your financial statements that are material. When you get to a governmental entity, because of the size, you can oftentimes get to a pretty significant dollar value that isn't considered to be material uh, to the financial statements, but certainly would be significant to budget and operations, unfortunately. Uh, but that is really just ultimately a, a structure and a component of the auditing standards, really, that we're required to follow. Uh, the other thing that's significant to note there is that as we conduct the audit, we're not doing a 100% test. You wouldn't want to pay us to do that. It would take a significant amount of time, obviously. <clears throat> um, so we're only sampling uh, particular transactions. So it is certainly uh, possible that things could go uh, and remain undetected through the audit process. Uh, but we do provide, uh, under auditing standards, what's referred to as reasonable assurance that the financial statements are properly uh, stated in accordance with GAAP. You know, you, you pull samples, but, you know, when I read what happens, and these people have been doing it for years, so how can you miss it for years? That's the thing I ask myself. Yeah, so, in, and I don't know the exact scenario that you're referring to, but oftentimes what you'll see is the dollars that are reported are, in fact, an accumulation of what may have happened over a number of years. So that $100,000 that you refer to may have been, you know, over a five or 10 year cycle. Uh, oftentimes it uh, certainly occurs at the receipt level. Uh, so when you think about the uh, deposits that you take in uh, regarding uh, village water payments, things of that nature. That's where it's, it's a lot of individual uh, smaller dollar value items uh, that just maintain and, and accumulate to, I should say, a, a very large dollar in total. Anyone else? Trustee Schiappa? It's normal practice to conduct sample audits. Yes, that's how all audits are uh, intended to be performed. Again, because of the fact of just the reasonable but not absolute assurance concept and uh, also taking into consideration the significant cost factors uh, that would go along with a 100% uh, test. Yes. Okay. Following right up on uh, Trustee Scapia, you're not doing the same samples. You're doing a whole different thing, so you're bouncing around 15 if, if your engagement, your ex, Next year, if you're engaged again, you're in a different sampling, et cetera, et cetera. So that therefore, yes. over a period of time, if you were the same auditing firm. Yes, so that's a, a great point. Uh, additionally, on that similar note is uh, we do <clears throat> incorporate what we refer to as elements of unpredictability, uh, so that each year we're not looking at just the same things over and over again, and management can easily anticipate uh, what we're going to do. So we do kind of on a rotational basis incorporate new areas of testing. Thank you. Anyone else? Trustee Francis. No question, just a comment. Uh, a clean bill of health reflects well on our finance department. It reflects well that's a well-run, efficient, and highly detailed finance department. So I commend our finance, finance department for that. Thank you. 
Yeah, no, absolutely. As I said, the, the village does a great job of preparing for the audit uh, in advance when we come in, and things are always in good order for us. Thank you. Any other questions of our auditor? Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Thank you all for your time. Thank Have you. Good Next, we have uh, 8B, consideration of request for an amendment to the Bluff Road PUD annexation agreement. Thank you, uh, Mayor. The, as, as described in the staff summary for this item, we mm -hmm. entered into an annexation agreement in 2008, actually a pre-annexation agreement, if you will, uh, for a property on Bluff Road in Jackson, south of 97th Street. Uh, Paul McNaughton was developing a an office park there and wanted access to the village water and it was not the property was not and continues not to be contiguous to the village so under <coughs> state law we cannot annex it but we can and we did enter into a pre-annexation agreement whereby we agreed to allow the developer to extend our water and to access our water system our public water system and in exchange the uh, owner developer agrees to annex when they become contiguous and also to comply with our local development uh, codes. Uh, one of those development codes is the improvement of uh, adjacent streets, uh, the adjacent side of any adjacent streets, and in this case that's Jackson Street and Bluff Road. Um, that uh, uh, d development was originally set to be completed in the first uh, two years of the development. It was extended. To, to, that, to November 1st, 2017 by another amendment. At this time, staff is recommending another amendment that would extend it to, um, to uh, uh, the, such time or within two years after the property is annexed to the village. Our feeling at, at staff level is that we would just as soon see the street not improved until it's annexed because that gives us more time before we have to maintain the street. Uh, and, so, and in the meantime, Downers Grove Township is responsible and is maintaining the street. And so uh, therefore, we were, would recommend that you give direction to staff to proceed with an annexation agreement amendment that would extend the deadline for completion of the street improvements. And I have talked with the property owner, and they are in agreement with this amendment. Questions of the uh, administrator? And so you need a, uh, uh, a motion to to direct staff to proceed with the amendment. So moved. Second. Any further di dialogue, questions, discussion? Okay. Uh, roll call, please. Trustee Model. Yes. Trustee Mattel. Yes. Trustee Snyder. Yes. Trustee Scappa. Yes. Trustee Francis. Yes. Trustee Beza. Yes. Six zero. <coughs> motion passes six zero. Considerations 8C, consideration of recommendation to purchase computer workstation upgrade. Thank you. I'd, I'd like to have Jerry Sapp come up once again to uh, give you an overview of our pending uh, purchase of uh, upgraded computer workstations for Village He wears two hats. He wears Our lots of hats. Good evening again. Turn it off. Oh, on. yes. Yeah. So uh, this year we have a, a workstation upgrade project uh, scheduled. This is to update all the village's desktop computers and laptops. Uh, it's our uh, workstation infrastructure, which was implemented in 2009 on a five-year replacement plan, which is now in its eighth year. Uh, the, uh, we've kind of pushed the platform to the edge of its usability, and uh, we have occurring hardware issues and system slowdowns. And this upgrade will bring the workstations up to current standards. Uh, just a snapshot of our snapshot of our overall uh, technology infrastructure. We run six main areas: uh, servers, backup, and disaster recovery systems, workstation, uh, network security, software, and then <coughs> just an all other category. Uh, each one of these have its own maintenance and replacement strategy. And there are dollars set aside in our information technology fund to uh, fund each one of these areas. 
just going to give you a quick snapshot of each one of these areas, just to uh, kind of give you an idea of what's entitled, entitled to them. Uh, eight servers that uh, process the village's uh, technology. This is our financial permit systems, document imaging, email, uh, police record management systems, website, GIS, the SharePoint server, and our file server. And these are put on a five-year pla replacement plan also. And the last time we updated these was uh, last year. It was our big project, uh, technology project last year to update servers. Uh, backup uh, and dis uh, disaster recovery system. We have a backup system at the Village Hall Data Center that backs up everything nightly. Over at the Police Department Data Center, we have a uh, disaster recovery system that in if we lose data or there's a disaster, we're able to rec recover our data in a matter of hours. Uh, this is upgraded on an as-needed basis, but uh, last year we rolled it into the server up upgrade project. So they have, everything's been updated as of last year. And the project before us uh, this year is the workstation upgrade. These are all the uh, computers and monitors and laptops at the Village Hall, Police Department, and Public Works. It encompasses 52 computers and six laptops. Uh, this is on a five-year replacement plan. And uh, we, uh, as I mentioned before, updated it in September 2009. Uh, network and security. This is our wired and wireless infrastructure. Uh, also our main firewall, email spam filters, vi virus protection on both servers and de uh, desktops. Um, we uh, update this periodically as uh, changes in technology dictates. And uh, typically, we are updating some piece of it every year. We never completely replace everything and redo it. Uh, all of our software, <laughs> desktop, office, Adobe PDF, uh, Microsoft Windows for the server and workstations, uh, all the operational systems I mentioned on the eight servers. And uh, these are updated uh, with volume licensing and support maintenance program. Uh, Upgraded every year through uh, annual subscription and maintenance fees. And this is the big catch-all for everything else. Uh, audio, visual, cable broadcast, video surveillance, phone systems, printers, scanners, tablets, cell phones, and once again, just periodically updated as needed. So on the hardware uh, program, uh, upgrade program this year, we received bids from four vendors. The uh, lowest one was National Tech Services of Libertyville. Uh, we're recommending that a contract for the purchase of workstation be awarded to National Tech in the amount of 59987 So I had to go through that fairly fast, but do uh, you have any questions? Questions? Jerry? <coughs> So back on your first slide, you mentioned uh, the platform is at the edge of usability. Can you be more specific? Yeah. When I say edge of usability, that's when I start uh, seeing hard drive fail and um, you know power supplies go out, swapping things out, more maintenance dollars rise up, so pushes those costs up. Thank you. Anyone else? And this amount was totally within the budgeted amount that we had Yes, there's a $60,000 budgeted and uh, came in at just uh, slightly under that. Thank you. If there's no more questions, I just wanted to add a couple of uh, comments. One is, you know, I think communications and information is at the heart of what we do yeah. on the village staff. Um, you know, second, a distant second, but second to having good quality people working for our village, um, having current <laughs> technology, the ability to access information, the ability to communicate amongst ourselves and to communicate with you and to communicate with the public is critical uh, to our success. And uh, second, I would just wanted to mention that Jerry does an excellent job uh, keeping us up to date uh, we, due to Jerry's abilities and knowledge of information technology, we're able to do a lot in-house that a lot of villages are paying consultants a lot of money to do. 
I just wanted to uh, uh, extend that appreciation to Jerry and also make sure you're aware of the fine job that he does. Thank you. Okay. And may I have a motion to direct staff to uh, uh, approve the uh, uh, purchase uh, of computer workstation upgrades? So moved. Second. Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Cabeza? Yes. Snyder? Yes. Trustee Schiappa? Yes. Trustee Francis? Yes. Trustee Model? Yes. Trustee Mattel? Yes. Six zero. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sherry. Under other considerations for announcement, deliberation, and or discussion, no, no official action will be taken. Anything to be mentioned there? And we're back to the residents' comments. Are there any, any additional residents who would like to address the board at this time? Reports and communications from village officials. I have a few items uh, real quick. Uh, one, I once again, want to remind you of our workshop dates for our strategic planning. Um, Wednesday, October, I'm sorry, Monday, October 16th, and Wednesday, November 1st. Uh, in that vein, you've uh, got an email last week from our consultant, uh, Rob Oberweiss of Executive Partners, asking you to respond to that email and schedule a, up to 30 minutes, schedule 30 minutes to talk on the phone with Rob. He's going to just do some background questions and talk uh, to each individual trustee as well as the department heads to um, uh, to to kind of assess uh, what you know what what you think the issues are in the village what uh, uh, just in gather information about uh, how to proceed with the strategic plan and <coughs> uh, if you don't uh, have that email let me know and I'll make sure I get <coughs> that to you again um, I also wanted to mention our community survey for the residents. Uh, we have uh, on our website uh, a community survey that you can take online, and we encourage residents to uh, to click onto that uh, on the <coughs> community survey website uh, at, at our website www.burr-ridge.gov, and take the survey. We're trying to uh, maximize the numbers response to those surveys is critical to our strategic planning and knowing what we're doing well what we're not doing well and what the issues are out there so that this uh, village board and your village staff can address those those issues um, finally I just want to mention to the village board that we were have been reviewing our website as well and I will be reaching out to you about uh, uh, what you want to see on the mayors and trustees page of that website um, and I'll be reaching out to you uh, individually here this week uh, to talk about that. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions if you have any on any of those items. Any questions with Doug? Okay, thank you very much. Any other reports, communications? And any non residents like to address the board at this time? Seeing no one, may I have a motion to go in the closed session? So moved. Second. To discuss, I'm sorry, approval of a, a closed session minutes of August 20, 28, 2017, and discussion of pending or probable lit, lit, uh, litigation. So moved. Moved. Second. Second. <clears throat> All those in favor? Aye. 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 And nays. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for, for, very much for joining us. Uh, we're going to be going to closed session at this, at this time, and we'll be reopening, closing at the end of it. So.